lot of people love the Beatles, but how many have ever performed as one? Or ever recorded at Abbey Road Studios? Or toured with the cast of Beatlemania? Perhaps the only person in the world who's done it all is John Babcock. Blackbird singing in the dead of night Take these broken wings and learn to fly All your life It's a love affair that began at the age of five when he was one of the millions who first saw the Fab Four on the Ed Sullivan Show. Well, she was just 17, you know what I mean. John was fascinated, not just by the Beatles, but by music. His father was an accomplished jazz drummer who introduced his son to the drums at the age of three. And by the time he was 11... He was in the drum corps, finishing up with the prestigious Hawthorne, New Jersey Muchachos. By the time he was in high school, it was apparent his career would be in music, which is when something else became apparent. Were people telling you you looked like Paul? Yeah, yeah, especially at, you know, at the time. I, I got that since I was in high school, you know. And that didn't hurt, did it? Being a <laughs> high school kid and having girls come up and go, hey, you look better like... than saying, hey, you look just like Ringo. <laughs> but he also had the talent and the dream to be a successful recording artist of his own. He'd written quite a few songs, but to record them, as he saw it, there was only one option the most famous recording studio in the world, Abbey Road. It's a mecca for me. I gotta go there. I gotta record there. I mean, most people are happy enough just to go to the crosswalk and walk across the crosswalk, get the picture taken, which is, you know, it's the most famous crosswalk walk in the, in, in the world. Which you, know, you did. Road. Of course, you had to do that. <laughs> Took the shoes off, you know, the whole thing. <clears throat> in great McCartney tradition. But d to go there, doing your own music as an artist is just phenomenal. So he went, a number of times. He recorded his own music in the very studio used by the Beatles, but even that wasn't enough, so he made a request. I want to use one of the actual mics that they used, that the Beatles used, that Pink Floyd used when they sang, uh, recorded uh, Dark Side of the Moon in Studio Two. One of the ones that John Lennon or Paul McCartney was sang on. What does your heart tell you? loved it so much from 85 to 1995 I did it over a half a dozen sessions there every uh, year or two I'd go over and cut some, if I was working on a new album I said I gotta go to Abbey Road and cut some tracks you know there's all the four Beatles plus George Martin and they're working on Across the Universe that's in uh, February of 1968 and then this photo in the exact same spot. In the same spot. Yeah, on we the same out. piece of equipment. Same piece of equipment, same organ and same Leslie speaker. <laughs> But the only thing he didn't have was the same success. It was all about getting a record deal. I got a record deal, you know, and I quickly learned that there's only one thing worse than not having a record deal is, is uh, having a bad record deal. But avoiding a record deal kept him out of the spotlight until he'd heard of an opening with Beatlemania. They said, hey, you know, come on, we're going to go on and do a tour. You can play Paul McCartney and we're going to go on a 15-city tour. Close your eyes. Played all kinds of, you know, 10, 15,000 seat arenas. Cast of Beatlemania, and I played with some of the original guys that played on Broadway. We went out and did it, and a lot of fun, a lot of fun to do it. But never thought I would do that when I was, you know, 20. 64. <laughs> yeah, or 64. Yeah. <laughs> He did over 15,000 shows as Paul over the years, to the point where performing as the Beatle had completely taken over. Is it frustrating even now that here we're doing a story on John Babcock, but half of it's Paul McCartney questions? No, uh, that, that's, that's a great compliment. It's a wonderful compliment, you know. If you're going to borrow, I'll borrow from the best. Frost upon the window, starting to get light. Another day. 
This is one of John's originals, called Frost Upon the Window. The McCartney influence is unmistakable, yet it's all John Babcock. No, he never did land that big record deal, but he's still writing, still recording, and still as passionate in his 50s as he was in his 20s. Because without stardom, he's still been able to carve out one of the most unique and fulfilling careers in music. You've given people that never had the chance in that fleeting few years in the 60s to see them right. a chance to imagine. Yeah. That, that's where the joy comes in. Whether it be my music or playing somebody else else's stuff. Or doing Paul. Or doing, or doing Paul. To be able to be part of that, it's a, it's a wonderful thing.